Good afternoon everyone, it's Mr Fletcher here and I'm just uh, going to talk to you about History GCSE Pathway 1 which hopefully many of you will be taking in September when you come back. Um, I'm talking about a PowerPoint which I'm actually going to send with this and it contains a number of slides. So my first slide is about what the GCSE is all about and if you have a look at that first slide it basically tells you that you've got uh, four components to your exam. The first component is called Paper 1, it's called a thematic study, and it's about the historic environment. And in that one you'll be looking at uh, warfare and the Blitz. In the second paper you'll be looking at a period study which combines two periods, two different ones. The first one is about Elizabeth I and the second one is about the Cold War. And when you eventually come to do that, you'll do that on the same exam paper, even though they're completely different periods. And then your third paper is a modern depth study, and that is about uh, Nazi Germany and the run-up to why Hitler came to power. If you go to the second slide, it's mostly about the Cold War and why it came about. And if you have a look very carefully at the cartoon, which is there, it shows you really the situation of Nazi Germany at the end of World War II. So if you have a look carefully, you've got Nazi Germany bang in the middle, and then you've got like two sides rolling a carpet up, which is representing of Europe, and that's, that carpet is being rolled up and back towards Nazi Germany. And you can see the Nazis are stuck in the middle, they're a little bit confused about what to do. From this side, the nearest side, you've got the Allies, the British and the Americans, pushing it towards Hitler, so they're coming from, if you like, France and that sort of direction. And then on the far side, you've got the Russians, and the Germans are sort of caught in the middle. And that pretty much summarises what the Cold War was about, because when those two rolled up ends eventually meet, they meet bang in the slap in the middle of Germany. If you go to the third slide, you'll see a map, and the map basically shows Europe at the end of World War II. And the red bits show you all of the bits that were controlled by the Russians, and then the green bits show you all the bits that were pretty much under the control of the British and of the Americans. That's commonly known as the West. The Russian side, the Eastern side, is often known as the as the East, or sometimes it's called the Eastern Bloc, sometimes it's just called the Communist Bloc, but essentially those are the two sides, the Green side, the West, and the Red side, the East. The next slide shows a cartoon, and it's about the Cold War, and you can see the two sides there. If you go right to the very top, you've got two figures sort of shaking fists at each other, You've got the Americans on the left-hand side with all of their weapons, their submarines, their satellites shaking hands, or shaking fists, sorry, towards the Russians who are on the other side. The Russians have got pretty much the same stuff. But underneath, you can see how the two sides disagreed with each other. So if you go back to your map, you'll see that both of those two sides touched each other, mostly down the middle of Europe, and they completely, utterly disagreed with each other about what to do once the war had finished. The Germans on the left hand side, that's wrong, I meant the Americans on the left hand side, you can see they wanted what's called capitalism and that just means that people have a lot more opportunities for freedom, to spend stuff, but it does mean there's lots of people who are poor as well as lots of people who are rich. The Russians on the other hand believe in communism and you can see there that they basically wanted everybody to be the same. It's sort of less free, but I suppose you don't have the fear of poverty. Everybody is equally on the same level. If you go to the next slide, you'll see that the, it shows you the main events of the Cold War. If you have a look down, it goes through from the Berlin blockade in 1948 all the way through to the end of the Cold War in 1991. And that sort of feeds into your task. Your task over the summer is to have a read of that two-page slide, see what the main events are, and then have a look at the final slide which shows you what you need to do. You need to identify who the two leaders of the two sides were during each one of those key events. You need to also assess how close to World War III did each of those events almost lead to. And then the last one is whether you need to decide whether which side won. Was it the East? Okay, that's the Russians, the Eastern Bloc, communism. Or was it the West? That's the Americans, the British and capitalism. Um, or it could be a draw, it doesn't really matter. But that's your summer work and hopefully that sort of outlines what you're going to do. Um, that should set you up for a really good course for Cold War that starts in September, goes all the way through to December, round about New Year. 
and then you'll start warfare uh, just after Christmas all the way up to the end of year 10. In year 11 you then do Elizabeth and you finish off with the German topic. I hope that all makes sense and uh, have a relaxing summer. Take care and I'll see you all in September. Bye!